This picture represents what I see the problem facing the Eurozone. Yes, some of them may be worried about, well, we're going to be looking at some possible default losses, but what they're not expecting at all are derivatives. So when they're looking this direction for defaults, pow, right out of the other side, they're going to get blindsided with derivative losses. Okay, let's talk about, and I'm estimating about a trillion in derivative losses. Let me talk about derivatives. It's a very complex subject. First of all, derivatives are huge. They're $600 trillion. I mean, it makes no sense. They do not correlate with the real world at all. Okay, the uh, Eurozone GDP, for example, is 12 trillion. The US GDP is 15 trillion. That's 27 trillion combined. There's a $600 trillion market. Now, the people that make these derivatives say, oh, it's risk management. There isn't $600 trillion of risk in the world to manage. This is a complete farce. The second reason why derivatives are huge is the people that are preparing these get about 2% commission when they prepare them. Well, figure it out. 600 trillion times 2% is $12 trillion. And that's what I figure the biggest banks that have prepared these derivatives over the last decade have made. That's why these guys are going home with 10 or $100 million bonuses. The third thing is Derivatives are unknown. You probably don't know what derivatives are. 99.9% .9 of the people have no idea what derivatives are, and that's because they're secret. They're kept off balance sheets. Oh, maybe there might be something in an obscure footnote to a balance sheet, but basically they're not in the liabilities section if you look for them there. And they're not traded openly. They're traded in dark pools that are run by these very large banks that are the ones that prepared the derivatives in the first place. So basically it's secret if you can't see it then it must not be a problem, right? I guess that's the ostrich theory. Well, that's what they're, they're doing, and I think they're getting away with it. Also, derivatives are completely unregulated. Now, in this country, the United States, we had the Dodd-Frank bill. It purported to regulate derivatives. It does nothing to, to regulate derivatives, Ab absolute zero. Let me give you an example of a derivative, of a good derivative, because I'm not saying that 100% of the derivatives are bad. There's maybe 10% that are good that, that perform some sort of a risk management or insurance function. For example, let's say that I'm an airline. Okay, I have a risk of oil prices rising. If oil prices rising, that could affect my profits. I could, in fact, have a loss. So I'd like to manage that risk, and I do that with an oil's future contract. Now, I've got somebody on the other end, I'm calling that bank B, and they'll take the other end of this contract. In other words, what I'll do is I will transfer my risk to bank B on the oil prices. I will buy, I will sign a contract that says I will buy 10,000 barrels of oil at $100 a barrel a year from now. And if the price of oil a year from now is $120, well, the bank B makes up the difference. Okay? Now, let me take that. That's, that's an insurance function. Okay? Let me take that very same oil futures contract and show how it just turns into a straight gambling contract. Let me replace the airline with hedge fund A. Hedge fund A, whether oil prices go up or not, or down, hedge fund A is unaffected. It doesn't have any business that depends upon the oil prices, but it buys the contract instead of the airline. It's effectively betting against Bank B. So all you have is a bet. Somebody's betting that oil prices are going up. Somebody's betting that oil prices are going down. It's pure, utter gambling. It does not belong in our business sector. Now, a lot of people say, well, gambling, you know, I bought 100 shares of Apple Computer. I'm gambling on Apple. Okay, well, that's really an inaccurate statement. Gambling, gambling is what you do in Las Vegas. Gambling is betting on the Steelers or the, the, the Packers in the Super Bowl. It has no economic value that is ever added. Okay, investment, on the other hand, yes, it does share the risk attribute with gambling, but it also adds value. If I buy 100 shares of Apple Computer, okay, there's a risk that the price may go up or down. That's a risk, all right. But Apple's going to come out with a new iPad 3. Okay, it's adding value to the world. And that's a huge difference. So these things where we have hedge fund A betting against bank B are totally useless in the uh, business world. Okay, I want to switch and I want to describe interest rate swaps. This is only one of many different types of derivatives, but it's the one that's really going to hammer the Eurozone. So if you're a European, I hope you pay attention. Let's say I own a billion dollar Italian bond, it's paying me 3% interest. But I think at the end of the year, 
the, that, that same quality Italian bond could be paying 7% because things are deteriorating in Europe. Well, I'm going to be losing interest, the difference between 3% and 7%. Now, I could be wrong. The Italians could get their act together and they could actually be paying 2% interest at the year. This end over here, I'm calling the market rate end. The 3% end, I'm calling the fixed rate end. Well, what an interest rate swap does is it allows the two parties, the one that holds the fixed interest rate, to swap with the person that's willing to take and pay the market rate interest. Which is the dangerous end? The dangerous end is the market rate end. Orange County, California found this out the hard way. They were holding the market rate end. That meant they were going to pay the interest rate of the market at the end of the year. They thought interest rates were going down. In fact, interest rates went up 3%. And what was the result? $2 billion bankruptcy. They closed libraries, they fired teachers. It was a total mess. Now, I've gone over this very, very, very quickly. Okay, and if you're interested in derivatives, then I suggest you get my book. Let me again say what's, what I think is going to happen to the Eurozone with interest rate swaps. I think there's going to be a 5% interest rate. I think out of the $400 trillion of interest rate swaps, I would say half of those key off the European bond market. I've reduced this, as I explained in my book, down to $20 trillion, which I think is a very conservative assumption. It could be much worse. 5% times 20 trillion, that is a $1 trillion loss. No one in the financial media, no one at the European Central Bank is even discussing this. I have. I hope you're paying attention. Thank you very much for your attention. The next videotape is how to save the euro.